everything now online, everything want to go, so want to book. I then I tell my children later. I, I uh, my heart pain also ah uh, also must go online ah. Uh, uh. Last time, ah, uh, a young time, ah, uh, we uh, any birthday card they all send. But now this every time group chat. That one is uh, my opinion is not good. But anything uh, call is better lah. Call or send the card. Everything now online. Everything want to go so want to book. My age I cannot use the online because I don't have to do. Yes, to a certain extent that technology brings people together. If let's say we have friends or family members which are uh, not in Singapore maybe in other countries yeah but to a certain extent I think now uh, a lot of people are, are too uh, engrossed in technology and screen time that you know even if I'm having coffee with my friend both of us will be like busy you know checking and scrolling Instagram or Facebook you know that kind of thing <music> We shouldn't be adding on e-services just for the sake of it. So unless there's, unless it really brings something to the table, then I think it's better to keep things as simple and accessible as possible for everyone. But I think that the trend from the government is that they are going to either introduce more apps or they are going to improve those those apps. The only thing that they can do is for those people who are not tech savvy. They can offer more assistance, and they do have some assistance. Like they have tech ambassadors, things like that, you know. But why not we have a differentiation of the apps? One is user friendly for the oldest or the senior citizens who are not tech savvy, and then there's another same app, but it's just that the features are different for those who are medium tech savvy, and you know, same app but more services for those who are very savvy. Only one button can press everything. Yeah. Uh, that one for me very easy. Everything, uh, no need to go online, just button. For me, I, I believe that it has made many tasks like convenient. Although that for a particular tasks, I would prefer to like be there in person because it's more efficient. Mostly, I don't like to use phone. The only I see the drama. <laughs> that one only. I'm supposed to be tech savvy, but I'm still like new to this AI. Yeah, so I guess it's about your perspective and your willingness to actually have a growth mindset. It's how we want to bridge the gap, you know, because we can learn from each other. I mean, if you want to go for convenience like me, so you have to practice some self-precautionary measures to make sure that you don't be victimised by those scams. So far for me, it is okay because I, I never click on any SMS links or I don't download the party apps. Well, I don't think you should put your blind faith in any one company. So at the end of the day, the only person you can really trust is yourself. So you owe it to yourself to be responsible when it comes to things like this. That day also one, one, one guy called me, give me your SIM pass and then ask me your POSC uh, account number. I'm the police. Then I say, hold on, I call my son. Anyone call you, don't give SIM pass, don't give your POSB, then your money all zero. <laughs> they will steal your money. At the same time, uh, organisations, government, as well as we need um, people to, to create the awareness. How do we deal with such situations? I think it's something that we should educate the public on. After hearing like the different opinions, like I did realize that not everyone is as tech savvy. So yeah, I do have a, a new like newfound like empathy for people who are not as used to like tech stuff. I'm sure each and every one of us have our own struggles with technology. It takes like a village lah to make that tech uh, successful. Do you think actually maybe technology actually is helping a lot of other people? Yeah, 
<laughs> some got good, some not good lah. The good I can take. A few, few little bit small, small thing I can learn. Maybe I take the step one by one.